think it's time I cut out now. Don't be a drag. You know how you flip me. I'm hip. So? So leave me here. If my father dug this scene, he'd put small round holes in your head. Well, I guess it is pretty late. I really have to get in. Good night, Pops. You're a dad. And you're a doll. Later. Later. Hello. Do you have an appointment? I see. Mr. Paul Johnson for 10 o'clock. That'll be for a blood test. No test. I beg your pardon? No test. Transfusion. <laughs> well, don't tell me a big man like you was afraid of a little needle. I have no fear. I came for a transfusion of blood. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Mr. Johnson, but you have to have a blood test. We don't hand out blood like gasoline, you know. We have to find out whether you need ethyl or regular. Well, you, uh, you sit over there. The doctor will be with you in a moment. There's some magazines there if you care to look at them. Dr. Cavanaugh wanted in pathology. Dr. Cavanaugh wanted in pathology. Oh, doctor, this is Mr. Johnson. He's here for an immediate transfusion. I see. Well, Mr. Johnson, we'll look you over right away. Nadine, will you take him into the lab and run his tags? Oh, no, he's having a fast pine on the fly. No test. Would you come inside, please? Sit down, won't you? Now, Mr. Johnson, why don't you want a blood test? I choose not to reveal a reason. Oh, I see. Well, then I suggest you try another doctor. You have no blood here? 
Yes, we have blood. But there isn't a doctor on earth who'll transfuse blood without first learning the patient's type, the RH factor, and other peculiarities. The wrong kind would probably kill you. I must have blood. I'm dying. I am type O. I'm sorry, but I can't take your word for any of those facts. Get away from there. Observe. No bleeding. It will bleed in some moments, but then thinly and sporadically. Have you been to see another doctor? None that you know. A hematologist? Blood doctor? Will you give me the transfusion? Not unless you submit to a test. Then without a specimen of my blood for study, it is impossible. Impossible. You will test. Then you will know and you will prescribe. You may study it in all the ways of your kind and you may learn, but you may not speak. You will not, you cannot transmit to any other being your knowledge of my tragedy. I've had a terrible headache. I am ready for your test. Well, I'm glad you changed your mind. Uh, take off your coat. Well, this won't hurt. Fantastic. The agglutinin disintegrating at an uninterrupted rate, resulting in the destruction of the cellular structure of the blood. Well, it's impossible. There, that should do it. How long have you been a nurse? I graduated seven years ago. You are a good one. <laughs> That's no question to be asking a nurse. You relax now, I'll be right back. Wait. Do you work always in hospitals, or may you treat private cases? Well, I special occasionally. That is good. I would like you to work for me. Oh, you would. Doing what? Preserving my health. Seeing to it that I do not expire. Mr. Johnson, no one in this wide world can guarantee life. Nor in any other, I fear. No, I suppose not. What monies do you receive for the work of your profession? Mr. Johnson, that's a very personal question. It is. If you will serve me, I shall pay you $200 each week. Let me tell you something, sir. No nurse would dream of getting $200 a week. Well, it's ridiculous. Besides, it has the sound of something very unethical. Would it still be unethical if Dr. Rochelle asked you to serve me? Well, if Dr. Rochelle assigned me to your case, I take it. I see. Would you ask the doctor to come to me? <laughs> yes, Mr. Johnson. And you're to administer 500 cc's of typo every night until further orders from me. Yes, doctor. Just what is wrong with him? Well, it's very interesting. He has... I'm... I'm not positive. Uh, there are indications of internal hemorrhage. I see. How long does he have? I don't know. I'm doing everything I can. From now on, it's in the hands of God. Did you do all this? What? Mr. Well, I've got to hand it to you. I've never met anyone who commits so many violations all at once. He seems aggressive. Why? I'll talk to him, Mr. Johnson. You get in the car. I know him. Thank you, Mr. Now, don't start writing until I explain. How do you plan to explain away a no parking sign, a fire plug, a red zone in the wrong side of the street? I think this man's won himself a ticket. He's in a critical state. Now, you put away that pad and stop playing stormtrooper. I've got to send this man home. You say he's critical, sunshine. He's critical, but I'll just tag along and see that he gets there safe and sound. Then maybe I'll take you in. Why? I haven't done anything. Why not? Here, buddy, you might enjoy a little light reading.
Where'd you pick up the car? He followed me from the hospital. I told you not to go drive in a car before you learn how. Come into the house, Jared. I want you to prepare a room. You having company? Which bedroom is she going to sleep in? Open the room in the south wing. I shall be in the kitchen. Do not come in. You're expected. Come on in. <laughs> Johnson's in the living room. I'm Jeremy. If there's anything you need, baby, just ring for me. All I need on this job is uh, blood. I'll see what I can do. I'm sorry I'm late, Mr. Johnson, but I had to clean up my desk at the hospital. Do not excuse yourself. Come, I will show you to your room. All right. Jeremy and I are alone here, Miss Story. You're the first person who's been in my house. we only been here a month. Jeremy, it is time that you saw that all the outside entrances are secure. Right, boss. Bring Miss Story's bag upstairs. Your room is upstairs, Miss Story. You have a lovely house here, Mr. Johnson. It is adequate, Miss Stewart. Here you will sleep. I've received blood this day. You will have no further duties until tomorrow. Then I'll say good night, Mr. Johnson. Yes, Miss Stewart. You locked my door. I did, yes. Why? You do not wish it. But my door's going to be locked. I'd, I'd like to do my own locking. In the place from which I come, no person would dare sleep in insecure quarters. Just where do you come from? I believe your expression was good night, Miss Story. Yes. Good night, Mr. Johnson.
Time narrows. There is death upon Davana. Davana must endure. Speak of the Earth creatures. They are second stage, subhuman, weak and full of fright. Speak of their blood. It may be as ours. I have sent to you 30 cubits for study. There must be more. The conquered enemies dwindle in the pens of pasture and time constricts. It is soon that we shall all perish. Perhaps the blood of this planet shall answer. Your mission upon this globe is to be accomplished in five out of six phases. In the first, you will study all characteristics of the Earth subhumans. Phase one is study. In the second phase, you shall increase the quantity of Earth blood, which you are transmitting to Devana. Phase two is more Earth blood. For phase three, we must have a live specimen, a subhuman to be used in vivisectory research. Phase three is a live specimen. You are phase four, in which Earth blood value will be determined by your survival or your death. Phase four is my life or death. If Earth blood preserves your life, Phase five will be the conquest, subjugation, and pasturing of the Earth subhumans upon your order. Phase five is conquest, subjugation, and pasturing if I live. Phase six will be the utter obliteration of this planet by your order, dependent upon the anticipated failure of your experiment. Phase six is destruction of this planet if I am to die. Phase six concludes the instructions. Phase six Conclude. I am returning. Already, boss? After you've taken Miss Story of food, prepare the automobile. You will take me to the public library. I hope you eat something this morning. I'm getting sick of throwing away good food. Anything else, boss man? No, nothing. Such as making sure nobody goes near the cellar, and such as changing little gold ingots he gives me into U.S. money. What do you do, kid? I'm here to keep Mr. Johnson healthy. I'm already healthy. What time do you get off work? I'm not here to keep you happy, Jeremy. <laughs> Mr. Johnson, you strike me as a very healthy man. I am pleased. Perhaps your treatments will prevent my predicted death. For a man who thinks he's going to die, you seem to be pretty casual about it. How can one not be casual? Death is not a remarkable thing. No, but it's not exactly something one looks forward to with giddy anticipation. That is true. Nor with undue dread. You have no further duties until this evening, so you may do as you like with your time until then. Thanks. I think I'll try that pool of yours.
You're gonna get yourself wet. I think everybody in this house could use a little exercise. Well, save me a little water for when I get back from town. I'll do that. You could probably use it. Hey, I've got a hook and line inside. Maybe I ought to go get it, huh? huh. I'm afraid, Jeremy, you just haven't got the right bait. Morning. I represent the airway vacuum cleaning company. You the gentleman of the house? This is my house. Crazy. I'd like to show you the product. You wish that I purchase your machine. I don't want you to purchase, mister. I just want to give you a free demonstration. You want to purchase, you purchase. You don't want to purchase, you don't purchase. I ain't gonna force you to purchase. Now, this is one of our standard attachments. We'll clean any rug you got in the house, no matter how deep the pile or how delicate the fabric. Ain't that something? I do not wish to purchase. Hey, let me finish, will you? This, as they say in the vernacular, is the darling of the vacuum cleaning world. You ever trouble with stopped up pipes or drains like in a kitchen or a cellar? Or with this little baby, your problem is over. See, it goes right into the pipe. No persistence. Leave my house. Shit. Give me a chance, will you? It's just a demonstration. You see this little baby at work in your own cellar, you turn flip-flops. No flip-flops. No flip-flops. Look, buddy, let me have five minutes of your time in your own cellar. I'll prove to you that this little baby can do what no other vacuum cleaner in the world can do. In my cellar? That's right. Take only five minutes. Come right in, young man. I shall be glad to see your machine in operation. Crazy. Will you just take a look at the dirt in that drain pipe, buddy? Ain't that a shame? You never know what a thing like that's gonna give you trouble. Well, we'll have it out of there in a jiffy. It's a very simple operation. I've ordered you not to sound the warning horn or make any high decibel noises while near me. Sorry, boss. The jerk cut me off. Jeremy, who are those gentlemen? Those aren't gentlemen. Those are bums. Bums? Those characters have hit the bottom of the barrel. They live from one day to the next just for a shot at cheap hooch. They're unfortunate. Unfortunate? They're happy. Give them a little wine or a bottle of hair tonic and they're tickled pink. Is too. What'd you say, boss? Nothing. Uh, Jeremy, I want you to invite one, no, three of those gentlemen to dinner tonight. Dinner? Are you kidding? Tonight, Jeremy. You'll proceed to the library. Well, anything you say. Finished here at five. Gotcha, boss. Car laid up, Doc? Oh, Harry. Yeah, I'm afraid that car has a chronic illness. Where are you going? Oh, over to see Nadine and our patient. Up in, I'll give you a lift. Oh, thanks. I hope you and Nadine stay on friendly terms. <laughs> at least until I'm back on wheels.
You look as if you were enjoying your job. You've got to keep in shape. I see you've got yourself a new chauffeur. Uh-huh. Clear the road, will you? Well, if it isn't Pittsburgh Perrin, the riot of every cell block. Officer Sherborne. Classmate? Yeah. Jeremy here spends his summers with us. What's he doing here? Jeremy, ask the doctor to come into my house. I guess I've been invited inside. I'll show you in, Doctor. Is Jeremy really a criminal? Too big crook. Can't imagine what he's doing working for a man of Johnson's class. <laughs> he's probably trying to reform. Come on in, I'll build you a cup of coffee while the brains talk. Thank you, Jeremy. You may go. I assume, Doctor, you have further scrutinized my blood. I certainly have, Mr. Johnson. And there are many questions I'd like to ask you. That desire is predictable. How many answers you receive, however, is not predictable. Have you spoken to anyone of this? No, I... I feel it best to keep it an absolute secret. An excellent feeling, Doctor. Can you tell me anything that I do not know? I can tell you this. Your blood is different from any I've ever studied in my entire career. In what way? In the first place, no man on earth should be able to live with such a low count of red corpuscles as you have. Continue. In the second place, your blood's behaving in an impossible manner. The agglutinin's breaking down, destroying the basic structure of the blood itself. The result is... Is evaporated blood. Well, that's an oversimplification. Blood within the veins couldn't possibly evaporate. The more precise term would be... Evaporation as a term would suffice, Doctor. Have you found a cause? Not yet. But you think you will? I may. I'm already neglecting my other work to devote all my time to this problem. God forbid such a dreadful new plague should strike the earth. Yes. God forbid. You seem already aware of what's happening to you. I am aware, Doctor. If a cure is not soon forthcoming, the blood of my body will turn to dust and I will die. As a doctor, it's my job to try to cheer up the patient. That is an infantile attitude, doctor. Continue your studies and return to me again when you have learned more. As perhaps I shall learn something soon, I feel that time is the great element in this case. Time is indeed the only element, doctor. I hope you will return soon, doctor. Boss, that cop in the kitchen is filling Nadine with lies about me. You are safe in my employ, Jeremy. Tell the policeman to take the doctor away. Then you will go to the park and collect my dinner guests. But, boss... Go. Can I pick you up at seven? <laughs> All right, Speedy, you win. But I have to be home early. Well, well, the big lover. What's your angle here, Pittsburgh? It's straight. The doc is waiting in the car for you, Flatfoot. It better be straight, buddy. Because from now on, I'll have my eye on this place. See you tonight. Okay. Lousy cop. Jeremy, I'm disappointed in you. You have such an honest face. Did you swipe my bathing cap? Because I can't seem to find it. No. I gotta go now. <laughs> Big feed? You're bully. Who's bringing it? My boss. He's a crackpot philanthropist. <coughs> Any chaser? You get a free fifth of French cognac when you leave. Oh. I'm witches. Got a couple of friends? Very then. Hey, Steino. Meet now. Hello, drunk. 
Why would anyone want to be a cop? Or a nurse. There must be something about helping people that gets into characters like us. Couldn't be the money. Or the hours. Do you like this job you're on? Yeah, it's different. They all are, but this one's especially interesting. Johnson's some kind of a foreigner, isn't he? He's got a dialect, but I can't place it. I have to ask him. He sure is a cold one. It's cold and odd and brilliant. He has a fantastically powerful mind, and yet he seems unaware of the simplest things. Like how to park a car. Why does he wear those glasses? I don't know. Can't discuss my patient's condition, you know. I'm interested in the condition of a certain nurse. Don't worry about me. Did you ever try and tangle with a nurse? No, but I've seen a couple of heavyweights take their count when they try. <laughs> There's a few things in our training that might surprise you. You want to bet? I guess this is your house. Jeremy! Thank you, Harry. I had a wonderful evening. That's my standard treatment for high-class nurses. Creep and a two-bit crook. I don't like the feel of this place. Be careful, Nanadine. Well, I'll be all right. I'm a big girl now. Sure. Good night. Good night. Take the case directly to the living room and return here. I have further duties for you. Carefully. Is in here King Farouk? Are you ready for your transfusion, Mr. Johnson? It's almost that time. I will be ready in an hour. Come to the living room then. All right. This night I am transmitting the blood of phase two. The study of phase one is in progress. Within 24 Earth hours, I shall locate and transmit the live specimen of Earth subhuman, as you have instructed. I have no information on my own probability of life or death. That's right, I put crants on it. I'm looking for prints. Probably won't find any. Yeah. Yes. Yes, sir, the same neck punctures as on the others. All right, Lieutenant, I'll let you know the minute we hear the thing. The woman was the 12th, wasn't she? 13th. It's a miracle the papers haven't put them all together. I can just see those vampire headlines. Any break in the case yet? Nothing. This killer is a fiend of the most diabolical kind. Interested in only one thing, blood. What can he do with it? He's no idiot. He has an ugly device that burns through the victim's eyes. Burns the brain right in the skull. Then he takes the blood. Thirteen. Maybe more. The missing persons rate's gone up sharply. The Airways Vacuum Cleaner Company has got men out looking for a door-to-door -door salesman. They probably don't want the salesman, they want the cleaner. Oh, don't worry, George, you'll crack it. Crack it? I can't even scratch it. All I can think of is who'll be next. Have you any close relations in the city, Miss Story? Why? Somebody leave me a million bucks? Merely the curiosity of the patient. Well, I have a 200-pound aunt in Detroit that sends me a box of saltwater candy every Christmas. Are you close to your aunt? She raised me as a child. Every now and then she gets on the phone to have a nice, long, collect chat with me. You may increase the flow of blood this time, Miss Story. Mr. Johnson, for a man who didn't know he had to have a blood test before a transfusion, you seem to know an awful lot about medicine now. I have done some reading. The last three days? Yes. Perhaps you could give me a bit of information that I was unable to discover in my research. What's that? In the uranium method of cancer examination, it is true that the uranium flies to the cancerous area, but the books neglected to give me an explanation. Well, that's true. Nobody knows the reason. 
then one assumption may be that since cancer attracts radioactivity, that the cancerous tissue itself may be charged with a negative energy. Possibly that might lead to a cure. What do you think? I'm sure I don't think anything, Mr. Johnson. Now you just, you just lie still until the transfusion is finished. Yes, very well. I have brought the specimen. He shall follow me back through the beam. With his transmission, phase three is completed. Phase three is completed. Phase one, near completion. Soon, you must complete phase four. There is destruction within the Council of the Northern Orbit. Destruction? Rule is dissolving. Independent action increases on a 73 degree tangent. The result of phase four shall be known to me in three of the Earth solar days. I shall return to the Vada and tell them so. It must be no more than three days. Gunno Lila. a window open and lives on a smog. Well, maybe, maybe not. What was in this? Water. Black water? Not when I took it into him. Maybe he took a bath in it. Ooh, it's got a chemical smell. It's vile. This guy is six kinds of a freak. Maybe you're right, Jeremy. Yeah, baby. Sure I'm right. <laughs> Look, Jeremy. Is there anything else you've noticed about him that's different? I noticed a couple of things in the last two days that look worse than different. Night before last, he had me bring those stumble bums out here to dinner, remember? Yeah, I saw them when I left on my date with Harry. You went out, but they stayed in. What do you mean? After dinner, he sends me out to work on the car. Later, I come back and he says the bums are gone. But they ain't, because I was outside all the time and I would have heard them. You mean to tell me that you think that they're still someplace in this house? I don't think nothing, but what happened last night was a real dilly. What happened? The boss second stories it in about two o'clock in the morning and he has a Chinaman with him. <laughs> yeah, and three pink elephants. Uh-uh, baby, I can see in the dark. He takes a Chinaman into his room and neither one of them comes out. I saw the boss in there this morning and he acted like nothing happened. Well, maybe nothing did. I figure it's my business to think the same thing. Sometimes I get the creeps. Yeah, so do I. I had to have company. Hey, you want to snoop around some? Maybe he's making atom bombs down there in the basement. No, I think we're jumping at shadows. Mr. Johnson's a very considerate employer. But I will tell you one thing. As his nurse, I think I ought to take this down to the lab and find out what it is Mr. Johnson's putting inside of himself. Instead of? Instead of food. Where are we going today, boss? You will leave me at the bookstore in Townley Hills District. You will then proceed to the service station. Later, I will meet you at the parking lot nearby. Why the station? I would like the vehicle scrutinized for any possible mechanical damage I might have done. OK. I see Miss Story's vehicle is gone. Uh, she went into town to catch a show. I believe she was looking for this. Yeah. Yeah, she lost it. In the cellar. Jeremy, you will return. Do you have any idea what it is? No, none at all. Where'd you get it? That doctor's a secret I'll let you in on later. Let's just say it's a food supplement a friend of mine developed. A food supplement? 
Well, that's something for an internist to analyze, not for me. Well, I know, but I think you might find it interesting. It's for you, Nadine. He says he's the FBI. <laughs> All right, I'll be right there. I had this blood sample tested. You had the dog pound send over? And? It's rabies, all right. A virulent case. Yes, well, label it carefully, please, and put it back in the chest. I'll have a use for it later. Hello? Secret Agent Doe Ramey? Did you track down those stolen police arch supports? Arch supports? I ride a motorcycle. <laughs> yeah, well, that's another kind of support. Well, at least you can't call me a flatfoot. What's happening tonight? Well, there's supposed to be an eclipse of the moon in Johannesburg, South Africa. What say we eclipse the stake? I'm on night duty. Go on at nine. All right. Okay, Doc. Pick you up at six. Bye. Bye. I was going to ask you to come back here at eight tonight. I should have those tests run by then. Oh, I did want to see the results of those tests. I'll tell you what. Harry will probably take me to the El Dorado. Do you know the place? Very well. Well, then I'll make sure he takes me there. And when you get the final results of the supplement, come on over and have a bite with us. I'll do that. Okay. I'll see you later. Are you here? I escaped. I came through the beam in your dwelling. Penalty for using the dimension warp is immediate dispatch. I had to do it. I had to escape the mob. What has happened? The wars are finished. The blood supply vanishes. The enemy captives have been taken from pasture, killed and their blood removed on the spot. I had to escape or perish. You were justified. You shall not be punished for using the Dimension Warp, and you may help me to expedite my work here. I shall help you. You are the recorder. I sent a live specimen through the beam with the courier. Was the subhuman satisfactory? The courier is dead, murdered for his blood. The specimen of Earth humanoid arrived in the Divana beam in a compressed state. He was crushed to the size of this communication. Crushed? The department concluded reservedly that it is impossible to transmit a human or subhuman anatomy through the beam from the Earth end. The courier lived because he never left the beam. If the conclusion is correct, you and I will be unable to return to Divana. However, I shall send another specimen this night. If it is correct, we must remain upon this world until we expire. I would prefer the outer planets of this system to the present agony of Divana. That is an emotional statement. It is an emotional time. And if I do not receive blood within four chronoctons of time, I will have no continuing need for emotion. You shall have blood. got to tell me where you got that stuff. Oh, hello, Harry. Hello, Doc. Where? From a friend. Your friend must be an amazing person. Well, the compound's fantastic. Not only does it contain every vitamin known to man, but a few I've never even seen before. And it has the basic food structures concentrated with bulk, roughage, energy, and diet control all in the same molecular structure. Do you mean that he's combined all of this into one primary unit? Yes. Who's he? Mr. Johnson. Oh. Well, let's uh, see what they have here for a hungry man. Do you think it's possible to reproduce Johnson's unit? I think we've discussed this sufficiently. Well, I guess I'll try the breaded veal cutlets. This place looks like an exhibit from a Vogel Age Museum. 
This world is as ours was of that time. Your observation is correct. Lie there on that plane. I shall bring the blood. Recipe, sir. Doctor, don't you even want to discuss this supplement thing? No, my dear, I do not. Well, I don't understand. Nadine, I've put in a long day. Now, I've described the compound to you. That's all there is to it. I'd like to eat my dinner and get back to the clinic. I'm with the doctor. All right, let's get on with the salad. It is finished. Do you feel relieved? I feel disturbed. The blood of this planet is rich. Soon you will find strength. Rise. We must leave this place. There is activity within me. It will pass. We proceed to your dwelling? No. We are too similar. There is a hotel 50 decapets in that direction. I will be alone among the subhumans. I do not know how to behave. A clerk will speak to you vocally. You must remain in a state of lingua receptivity and imitate his sounds and meanings. You will remain in contact? I will come to you at the hotel place on the noon of the Earth star. Doctor. Oh, massage her arms. No, she's still alive. Look at her glasses. They're just Yes, nice. I know. I'll take those glasses off. She's gone. Get an ophthalmologist. And call the coroner's office. Sure have had a lot of cars park here tonight. Yeah, it's one dollar. Thank you. Hold. You will come with me. I must have a second live specimen. You will drive the automobile as I direct. Dr. Rochelle's. A woman died in the hospital tonight. Yes? Is Johnson there? I don't know. Look, Nadine, I want you to get out of the house right now. Harry, what are you talking about? The woman who died. She had no eyes. At least, not like ours. I don't follow you. She wore the same kind of glasses Johnson wears. Nadine, I don't think he's a human being. Harry, have you been drinking? Look, if I didn't have to go on duty in a half hour, I'd come out there and get you myself. I, just take my word for it. Johnson's dangerous and get out of there. Well, look, maybe you have got something. I'll tell you what. You stay there until just before you have to go on duty. I'll see what I can find out on my own, and then I'll call you back. Are you nuts? Beat it out of that place. Goodbye, Doc. It is impossible for you to escape. Come to me. I hear you. You can't hurt me now. It doesn't work now. It's a lie. I am not so injured. I don't think he's 
for real, neither. Well, where is he? He put me in a taxi and took off in the car with some queer-looking dame. Uh -huh. Well, this gives us a chance to search the house. Come on, let's try the living room. We better make it snappy. Find anything? Not yet. How about you? What's this? Good. Maybe we hit something. Look. Well, now we've really got something. I don't think we ought to fool with it. It might blow up. What's that? Something here you can't get your hands through. What is this thing? I don't think I want to know. Whatever it is, no one on this world ever made it. You mean the boss is some kind of man from Mars? I don't care what he is, but I think we ought to smash this thing. You couldn't bust through that with a 20-pound sledge. There's nothing we can do about this. I'll stay here, you go down the cellar and see what you can find. Okay. told you about the woman who died here tonight. He said she was like Johnson. This has nothing to do with our patient. The woman seems to lack any visible aperture on her optical tissue. She has a fantastic blood disease in which the agglutinin is disintegrating. Disintegrating? Is that what killed her? No, she died of rabies. What? I've been experimenting with the blood from a rabid dog. Someone injected that same blood into her tonight at least an hour ago. The impossible part is that she lived through the transfusion. Who would do such a horrible thing? Someone who knew that she needed blood desperately and didn't know what kind of stuff he was pumping into her. I say it was Johnson. Doctor, do you think Mr. Johnson is suffering from the same disease as this woman? I will not discuss Mr. Johnson. Why? About this woman. I think I know the cause and treatment of her disease. You do? Yes. Apparently, the victim has lived in an area that's been constantly charged with radioactive material. It was this atmosphere that affected the blood. Where would such an atmosphere be found? In a place where continuous nuclear detonations had taken place over a period of years. An area of all-out nuclear warfare. But there is no such place. Yes, I know, my dear. There's no doubt in my mind that this woman is something other than human. She's an alien. I see. What would be your treatment? First, removal from the toxic atmosphere, and then a complete change of blood. Would this cure Mr. Johnson? I'm not speaking of Johnson. But he fits your description. Nadine, please. Dr. Rochelle, does this man have some kind of a power over you? Has he threatened your life or something? Nadine, I, I, I really must hang up. I, I have a great deal of work to do. Look, Dr. Rochelle, I... The doctor is no longer in contact with the story. Mr. Johnson. Remain in your room. from me, Nadine. I am going to dispatch you. I hear your voice, Mr. Johnson, but I'm not going to open my eyes. for you to hide. You may conceal your person, but I can find your mind, and I shall destroy your doctor.
Nadine, I am coming. Listen to me. I am not going to kill you. You and your doctor have cured me. You have saved the people of Devana. Because of you, we shall live. I am coming. Still busy. The makeup of this blood's amazing. I think the coroner will agree. I can't wait any longer, Doctor. I've got to go on duty right away. Uh -huh. Guess I can continue my examination alone. If the dean calls, tell her I've gone to work. Oh, well, Harry, why don't you try to get her again? Once more. To think of her under the same roof with that monster. Mr. Johnson is no monster. I can't wait. Good night, Doctor. Good night, Harry. Do not run. I am coming. driving directly to you. Every six, Sergeant Walton. Hello? I've got to talk to Harry Sherborne. I've got to talk to him. Hold it, lady. Don't get so excited. Now, what do you want to talk to him about? Maybe I can help you. Please! He's after me. I've got to talk to him. I think he's on traffic duty. Who's after you? Oh, please! Please! Look, lady, you've got to calm down and tell me what's, what's the matter. What's up? There's some hysterical dame wants to talk to you. Can't figure what. Did he? Oh, Harry, thank God. Johnson's after me. Where are you? I'm at the I'm at the picnic grounds parking lot. Stay there. I'm on my way. I can't stay. I... <laughs> on the north side, and I'll take the one past the zoo. Simmons, no siren. Returned. It has returned. I shall not kill you. You shall not kill me. The first specimen I sent to Devana was crushed. It may have been an accident. I shall send another. You shall send another. It shall be you. It shall be me. Rise. We will walk to the automobile. I am a 
about to be attacked. Return to my house. I shall dispose of the intruder. Return to the house and enter the transmission beam in the living room. Return and enter the beam. When you are inside the beam, slide the power lever. It will send you to Davana. It will send me to Davana. to do this? Yes. Ow. With his eyes. Is that him? Yes. Are you all right? I'm all right. Stay here. I'm going after him. I feel sorry for him. Why sorry? Buried so far from home, so far from everyone he knew. I can't feel sorry for him. He had no emotions as we know them. It was a foreign thing, come here to destroy us. Thank God he tried too hard. 